Welcome to this special broadcast to announce the winner of the 2022 Queen Elizabeth Prize for Engineering. Last year showed us once again just how much we all rely on the work of engineers to keep us connected to friends and family, to enable us to work from home and continue to do business around the world. And then of course the COP26 summit in 2021 just laid out the enormity, the challenges facing the world and engineers are going to be crucial to deliver long-lasting solutions to those challenges. So let's kick off proceedings, and I'm honoured to welcome Her Royal Highness, the Princess Royal. I'm very pleased to welcome you all to this event. Since its inaugural award in 2013, the Queen Elizabeth Prize for Engineering has recognised those whose work exemplifies the qualities of ingenuity, resilience and collaboration. Sadly, we're having to do it once more online. The COVID-19 pandemic continues to impact the lives of billions of people around the globe, requiring us to adapt flexibly and swiftly to the ever-evolving challenges it presents. But as is always the case, engineering rises to these challenges. Without their efforts, life during the pandemic would have been very different. Society's attention has focused on medical engineering and new methods of drug delivery to treat COVID-19. The speed with which vaccines have been delivered safely and effectively has been incredible to witness and is hopefully helping to move the world back to what we once considered normality. COVID-19 has illustrated just how much the world relies on engineering and engineers in all areas of our lives. Throughout the pandemic, the response of the engineering community has been extraordinary. From the first months where rapid deployment of testing systems and ventilators provided vital assistance to healthcare professionals, to the maintenance of a global communication infrastructure Every facet of engineering has played a part. The work of some previous Queen Elizabeth Prize winners who developed the internet and World Wide Web was vital in how the world kept going. Engineering has truly been at the heart of the global response. And I thank you all for the work you have done and continue to do as we seek to overcome these challenges. The ambition and scale of the work of all the Queen Elizabeth Prize laureates highlights the very real link between engineering and innovation. One does not exist without the other. Alongside the enormous societal benefits, the laureates' work serves as an inspiration for young people around the world who are looking for a career where they can be challenged where they can share knowledge with people from a wide range of backgrounds and with different experiences and can achieve things that genuinely make a difference to people's lives. The announcement of the winner of the 2022 Queen Elizabeth Prize for Engineering will be made shortly. To win this prize or even be shortlisted, 
means that their work has and will have a profound impact on the lives of people around the globe. And as with previous laureates, their work demonstrates clearly the huge role played by engineers in providing solutions to some of the world's most pressing challenges. To them, I extend many congratulations. And to all of you involved in the profession, wherever you may work, and whatever stage of your career, I thank you. Your Royal Highness, thank you. Now, engineering is a creative industry, and the QE Prize Create the Trophy competition invites entrants to design a trophy which will be manufactured and presented to the winners of the Queen Elizabeth Prize. Now, entrants need to demonstrate their own creativity and design skills and a knowledge of structures and the manufacturing process, all of them key to becoming an engineer, of course. The competition is open to young people between the ages of 14 and 24 and who can come from anywhere around the world. To tell us more about the competition and to announce this year's winner, I'm delighted to introduce the architect Rebecca Ramos, one of this year's judges. Creativity is a key element of all good engineering. The Queen Elizabeth Prize Create the Trophy competition encourages people from all over the world to combine their creativity with the science skills and a knowledge of the manufacturing processes. It truly gives a glimpse into the world of engineering. This year's entries perfectly illustrated the depth of talent and ingenuity that the competition is seeking to encourage. It was so uplifting to see the responses to the brief, to design a trophy which combines the incredible prestige of the Queen Elizabeth Prize with the world of contemporary engineering, interpreted in so many thought-provoking, interesting and inspiring ways. I was once again delighted to share the judging panel with Science Museum Director Sir Ian Blatchford, Structural Engineer Roma Agarwal and Materials Engineer Zoe Lockley. As you can see from the finalists, our decision was incredibly difficult to make. Two of the finalists really stood out to us. The first one displayed a wonderful play between symmetry and asymmetry and an unexpected use of the tools provided for the design. For this reason, I'm happy to announce that we decided to give the judges' commendation to Vishwajit Murray, age 24, from India. Our winning design shows a highly skilled appreciation for beauty, design, and scale, all inspired by global connectivity. For this reason, I am delighted to announce the winner of the 2022 Create the Trophy competition, Anshika Agarwal, age 70, from India. It's a great feeling that uh, such a honorable people will receive my trophy as their symbol of success, their trophy. It's a nice feeling, great feeling. I can't even explain in words what I am feeling right now. My warmest congratulations to Anshika and Vishajit. And many thanks to all the competition entrants for making our judging process so difficult and so enjoyable. We look forward to seeing you again next year. So on to the main event. To become a Queen Elizabeth Prize for Engineering Laureate is to receive the highest accolade in the world of engineering. It's a recognition that their innovations have changed the life of billions of people around the world, and that without their work, our lives, travel, communication would be unrecognisable. Since 2013, the Queen Elizabeth Prize has been honouring the engineers who brought us the internet, who developed drugs delivery systems that benefited the health of billions, that enabled digital imaging sensors, that brought us free navigational systems around the world, and that has developed solid state lighting technology, which has completely transformed the way we illuminate the planet. So who is going to be joining this illustrious group of laureates? Well, to tell us, I'm delighted to welcome the chairman of the Queen Elizabeth Prize for Engineering Foundation, 
Lord Brown of Maddingley. The Queen Elizabeth Prize for Engineering champions bold, groundbreaking innovation in engineering. Engineering is a noble endeavour and it holds the key to addressing global challenges such as climate change and the COVID-19 pandemic. There's never been a more appropriate time to recognise the enormous contribution of engineering to human civilization. Since it was first awarded to the five pioneers of the internet and the World Wide Web in 2013, the prize has highlighted the essential role engineering plays in connecting societies, enabling international commerce and strengthening global communities. The prize salutes these engineering visionaries, individuals or part of a team, and excites creative young minds to help solve the challenges of the future. It also encourages today's engineers to help push back the boundaries of what is possible across all disciplines and applications. This extraordinary prize enables us to honour the collective global impact of engineering and helps us to foster emerging ideas and innovations. More than ever, humanity faces increasingly significant and complex challenges. Engineering helps us to find solutions to those challenges, making the world we live in a better, more sustainable and more equitable place. Engineering has transformative power. It is responsible for the world's biggest and most efficient energy systems, cutting edge agricultural practices, and the groundbreaking vaccines which have been manufactured at scale and delivered with precision. Reflecting the pace of engineering innovation, this year marks the transition of the QE Prize to an annual cycle, a move which enables us to celebrate even more of the very best in engineering and to honour more engineers whose work improves the lives of so many people around the globe. This year's laureate has undoubtedly achieved this. For the discovery of a powerful permanent magnet which has been transformational in its contribution towards enabling cleaner energy saving technologies to reducing global warming and to build a sustainable future for humanity and for the development and commercialization of a sintered production process which increases magnetic strength and enables wide industrial usage, the 2022 Queen Elizabeth Prize for Engineering is awarded to Dr. Masato Sagawa.
The winner this year is Dr. Masato Sagawa, the inventor of a high strength magnet called a neodymium boron ion magnet. And it's the product of 40 years of work by this extraordinary engineer. Magnets have existed since the 18th century. So Dr. Sawawa discovered a way to make magnets a lot more affordable and a lot more powerful. This um, particular magnet uh, is, is essentially made from a type of metal called neodymium, which is what's known as a rare earth metal. And it has the property uh, that it can be magnetized, like certain other metals, like iron, for example. But by itself, it's not stable. Uh, in, in the magnetism is, isn't, isn't reliable enough. But mix it with other elements, in this case with, with iron and the element boron, and you get this neodymium iron boron magnet, which is hugely versatile. It's used in MRI for medical imaging industrial robots, the motors that make the hard disks of the computers work. It's used in wind turbines. It's used to produce incredibly powerful electric vehicles. But it's also used around the home. The little speakers in your phone, the speakers in your laptop, the motors that last for ages and ages and ages in those portable vacuum cleaners. They're enabled by this kind of high strength permanent magnet. What we look for at the Queen Elizabeth Prize are creations of engineering that uh, bring a substantial benefit to humankind. A significant amount of energy is used every day all around the world by anything that has in it an electric motor. So any way in which we can make electric motors more efficient is a benefit because it uses less energy. He went from the invention to the development to the manufacturing. And that is, I think, the sort of the epitome of the highest level of engineering. Uh, to me, he's an icon. To me, he's a role model. And the reason is a very simple one. You know, in life, what matters is purpose, perseverance and passion. And I think what really speaks to me uh, about uh, Dr. Masato Sekigawa's uh, super magnet uh, and innovation that, that he's developed is his perseverance and decades uh, worth of uh, experimentation, trial and error, and uh, his, his uh, commitment. Uh, uh, and, and I think it's, it's a great lesson for, 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 for many of us, especially those uh, who are looking for a career in engineering and science. I believe Dr. Sagawa's winning will encourage young generation in Japan to be more interested in engineering and join the engineering community. I do think engineering makes a difference, otherwise I wouldn't be an engineer and I wouldn't be chairing this uh, judging panel. Uh, engineering makes the world a better place and young people want to have that type of impact uh, in their careers. So if you suddenly made all these permanent neodymium magnets disappear, our world would, I wouldn't say would fall apart, but it would be a very different place. So it's absolutely vital that we, we celebrate and we tell the world about these contributions in engineering that are as important as anything else we, uh, that humankind has been able to do. Neodymium magnets uh, and, and Dr. Sagawa's contribution to, to, to that technology uh, has really been a game changer for, for wind power and for, for offshore wind in general. The fact that we use neodymium magnets, which are really strong and have high performance, means we can make the products compact. Um, so this is what's enabled um, speaker technology to become so small that it can fit in your ear and it can be wireless. Neodymium magnets are being used in lots of different really exciting experiments in space. So we're using them on Mars rovers to detect different types of magnetic dust on Mars. We're using them in the International Space Station to detect uh, antimatter and cosmic rays in physics particle detectors. And we use them 
all the time in different things like in hard disk drives, in motors, um, magnetic brakes and bearings and things like that. So they're all over the place uh, in space and down here on Earth. Because neodymium magnets rarely lose their magnetism, the products um, that they're in will rarely fail because of um, an issue with the magnet. Um, and this means that um, the product has to be replaced less often, um, which reduces waste. The type of magnets that are used in, in modern offshore wind turbines, you can fit one of these magnets in a, in a shoebox, but that one magnet has enough magnetic force to, uh, to pick up a car. So, so some really phenomenal things that have been, cap that have been made possible thanks to Dr. Sagawa's innovations. And uh, it's really been a game changer on, on allowing wind turbines to be cost efficient and, uh, and slowly become um, a big part of this, this green transition. It's great to speak to you about your innovation based on neodymium, uh, a rare earth. Uh, I think everybody would uh, say that they don't quite know where these are, but I'm certain that we would notice if they didn't exist because they are ubiquitous in so many things that we're using today. What I would be interested to ask you first is what led you to move away from the research on conventional magnets uh, and see the possibilities of using uh, rare earth metals to create a permanent magnet? When I started uh, with the research of the samarium cobalt magnet as I joined the company, and I was told that I need to do work on research to improve um, this. And in this process, uh, I realized that the cobalt, which was used, being used for the magnet, was very expensive. And it was very scarce because it can only be sourced from Congo, which was a conflict-ridden region. So the supply was very unstable. And I... Uh, had recognized this um, issue and I had thought about, well, why not use iron instead, which could give a better magnetic property for the overall magnet? Um, because if you compare cobalt and iron, if you look at the, the smallest unit of magnetism, what we call the magnetic moment, um, it's only, um, cobalt is only 70% of iron. So if we could use iron instead, we will see, and I had anticipated that we will have higher magnetic strength. So based on these two aspects, um, I had looked into researching and finding a compound which uses rare earth and iron. Um, and I recognized that perhaps this could be the needs of, for, for people. And this is something that's required and needed in the world. And that was the start of my research. What, what I'm interested to know is when did you actually realize the benefits of using a powdered metallurgical manufacturing process to produce a sintered magnet? That process is unique, I think, to you. So when I looked into rare earth magnets in combination with iron instead of, of cobalt, um, my first step was to find a compound that's appropriate. Um, the known um, elements that they were used with rare earth was not magnetic at all. So everything had to start with finding the appropriate compound. Um, I had a clue, a hint um, from uh, through, through, through my research that um, neodymium and iron could work. And that's why I came to find the neodymium, neodymium iron and boron compound. But it's not uh, enough just to find the compound itself. Um, because you need to have the compound to apply magnetic coercive force. In order to do that, you need to have the microstructure that's appropriate to have those magnetic properties. And so that's why we needed to look into the, um, the production process. And for that, um, we came to find this particular process that we're talking about with sintering. So first of all, you have the compound, you pulverize it, um, and you get the uh, directions all aligned, then you press, and then you go through sintering. Once you go through this process, we find that it will give you the most appropriate microstructure uh, to, to give the material magnetism, and it would be a ma appropriate for 
for magnets and that i would i would think came through our research and eventually led to the success of the, of the research itself can i ask you finally what uh, what actually makes the queen elizabeth prize for engineering a, a special award to you uh, you've had many awards uh, i would love to know what makes this particular award special for you this award i admire specifically that it's an engineering award and personally of course i'm very happy to be awarded this but to put the focus on engineering and this engineering is always for others for people that's why we exist that's that's why we do engineering and this award really influences people and people get people noticing about how important and engineering is dr sagawa uh, thank you very much for being with me and answering all these questions thank you and that is it congratulations to dr sagawa thank you to her royal highness the princess royal and to lord brown and to all the judges and thank you to our latest Queen Elizabeth Prize for Engineering laureate, Dr. Masako Sagawa, for his extraordinary work in the field of green and energy efficient technology, effectively helping to build a sustainable future for all of us. You can find out more about our winner by going to the Queen Elizabeth Prize website, or you can hear Dr. Sagawa talking about his work on the latest episode of the Queen Elizabeth Prize podcast. Just search for Create the Future on your chosen podcast platform. Finally, get involved in the conversation on social media using the hashtag QEPRIZE2022. And that is it. Thank you so much for watching. Goodbye. <laughs>